Uh, play of the game from way down. One, two, silence. The Raider getting absolutely a team wipe. The living bombs going. Oh my goodness, the ring. Bob says they go gonna find Raven. Lifefinder keeps Maya up. It was gonna be a close thing. And he was what? Get out of no! No! Triple stun again. Big flanks coming out from the uh, blaze. It's a death metal though. Death yeah. metal into oh, the double my. triple kill. Hello everybody and welcome to the Nexus Gaming Series. It's playoff time. And tonight, it's the Heroic Division. We're coming in with the number one seed, Broken Alliance, with number eight, Pro One. Pretty, uh, pretty hype matchup here out of this top division from Nexus Gaming Series. I'm your host, Arrow, and I'm going to be joined by my uh, tiny co-host. She is right here. She may make an appearance, Alpha. And uh, we're going to get right into this as the teams are ready to go. So let's just take a quick peek at the map bands here. Broken Alliance banned out Battlefield of Eternity and Tomb of the Spider Queen. Probe 1 banning out Towers of Doom and Volskaya Foundry. And with Broken Alliance selecting map pick as they are the higher seed team they get to choose, they're going to Dragonshire. And just taking a look at the, uh, the overall standings here for the brackets, we do see up there in the top Broken Alliance and Probe 1. Whoever wins this match will go against Archon or Nobo Esprouts, whoever wins that matchup. All right. So we are all set on our side of things. I believe the teams are both ready as well. So we're just waiting on them to select the button. So Broken Alliance... Uh, Let's take a look at the actual standings as opposed to the bracket here. Uh, let's see. So Broken Alliance came in with 33 points, which is uh, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, that's out of a total of, I think, 36 possible. I think there were a total of 13 teams, so 12 games. Um, obviously, there were some that withdrew. So, uh, so ultimately, some points were let go there, but... Uh, but certainly 33 out of 36 is very high. And it means that they pretty much 2-0'd most of the teams. And here we go, getting into the draft on Dragonshire. It's game number one between Broken Alliance and Probe One. It'll, there we go. I was going to say, it'll load eventually. Don't worry, it's coming back. Alright, so first band coming up here on Dragonshire. Going to see somebody in the solo lane that hopefully can hold on to that point. We're going to see potential for some globals, maybe some gank rotations. But to get started with, we're going to see an Alarak ban. Now in the regular season here, Probe 1 lost to Broken Alliance, 2-0. Coincidentally, I cast that match. Okay, I thought they were. I was trying to check to see who Broken Alliance was previously. I'm gonna see the Sylvanas band there. Followed up by the Maiev. So, already some high skill cap heroes there with the Maiev and Alarak being banned out. Johanna gonna be the final ban. Along with that Sylvanas. And that, that first, uh, first pick option now, going over to Probe 1. 
<laughs> the goodest boy. I know, right? The goodest boy. He is the. He is totally the winner. He's not even in the room at this point. I don't know where he went. He probably went to pass out on the, on the bed. But we're gonna see Jaina, coming out from Jati, and this is uh, this is a, a hero that Jati plays a fair bit, because I remember it. <laughs> Uh, we're also going to see now Mason Blaze coming in with Junkrat and Shredded with the ETC. And there was a uh, comment earlier about not letting Shredded feed too much. I don't know. Going in on the beefcake. I could use a little, uh, little hamburger right now. So we have seen uh, Mosh Pit plus... Rip tire. We could also see a stage dive though. And there's the Genji and Rexar. So both, well, two out of the three things that I mentioned earlier, uh, coming out from Probe One here. We've got a solo laner who's going to be able to hold on to that point uh, pretty well there. We also have the the gank rotation in the Genji. And third band going to be the Garrosh here. And I, I like that. That that's a good ban. That would be a, a nice easy pickup here for Probe One to help complement what they've got going so far. Mason Rat OP coming in from Ryokai. Third and final ban for Probe One. Probably another one of those. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say it seems like they're they're targeting a specific player in that Alarak Mayev, so maybe they were gonna go down that route, but uh Anna's gonna be the ban here. And Anna being a top tier hero here. Significant value and gonna see Lunara and Anduin. So, okay, so we've got the Light Bomb with the ETC Power Slide. We've got the Spread Damage. So, what, what are we going to see now out of Probe 1? Could see... Yeah, okay. So, Nubarak is going to be the pickup here for Probe 1 on the tank. So Anubarak can help with the with the ETC. He's also going to have the beetles, which will help with some of the junk rat poke. Um, could see the the cocoon going out onto the either that ETC or the Anduin. And we're going to see Dahaka coming out from John Knight. Unless of course people change, but so far it doesn't look that way. All right, so game number one, Dragonshire here between Broken Alliance and Probe One. Coming at you in just a moment. And looking at these drafts, I'm not sure, not sure. Certainly, the Junkrat and Lunara have relatively low health, so they can get if they get poked down by the the Jaina, then Genji can get that quick zip in and out. But a Nubrak being a bit of a kind of a dive tank could leave the backside exposed to the Jaina. But what can they get on that? They could get a Dahaka back there. They could get even a Lunara back there if they take the leaping strike. But we'll see how this turns out. Here we go. Game number one here. Broken Alliance on the left. And let's get started with them. We've got Jet playing the Lunara. Uh, Cubico on the Anduin. Shredded on ETC. John Knight on Dahaka. And Mason Blaze on Junkrat. And on the right for Probe 1, Really's going to be on the Rexar. Perfection on Rhaegar. Jati on Jaina. Thunderblade on Genji. And Christy on a Nubarak. Yeah, I think you I think you're probably right, Darth. Like the Broken Alliance um setup does seem a little bit easier, right? You stun, you pump a bunch of damage into people, you walk away if you need to. Um 
it seems like it's going to be a little bit harder for that to happen for uh, Probe 1. But, you know, I mean, with the stuns coming out from Anubarak and the uh, the damage that Jaina can put out, we could see some, some pain here coming out from Probe 1. Just a little bit ahead of that ETC, Jati is able to make it over to the other side of this wall safely. Let's take a look at these talents. So we've got that Spirit Swoop for uh, Rexar, but hold up the uh, Dahaka here getting caught and pulled out. It looks like Misha's going to be the first casualty of game one. I don't even think that counts as first blood. She, she didn't announce it, so we're not we're not calling that. So what else we got? We got Prog Rock. Uh, Prog Rock. We do have Bold Strategy as uh, Broken Alliance heading over to pick up their siege camp early, and of course Probe One doing the same. ETC coming over here. They do have this Lunara Wisp, and that's going to be a, a quick call to invade. But Anubrak is behind, so he's going to he's going to pull them off of that that idea. Probably just a quick look is all they were looking at, making sure that they were in fact there. So ETC getting started on the channel down in the bot lane here. We've got Jaina and Rhaegar working with the siege camps as uh, Broken Alliance did head over to their bruiser camp now. And Dahaka's going to try to head up and see if he can't flip this up top. But Misha's there to stall that out. Down in the bot lane, though, just ETC with a couple of siege giants opposite Rhaegar and Jaina. And Rhaegar's going to move in and try to try to turn this over in the bot lane as Dahaka's doing so on the top. They do successfully flip the bot lane now, so Siege Giants will get a little bit closer here. But in the top lane, the Bruiser Camp getting closer to the wall, and we see the Junkrat grenades there coming over the wall, getting some damage in. Not uh, not a whole lot there, but oh, geez, the Anubrak getting rooted, chastised, and that's going to be first blood. And with the Bruiser Camp here... That's going to allow them to see the pings onto that bottom tower. That's going to give them a, a short burst of XP here. Nearly a full level lead. About three quarters right now for Broken Alliance. And now Jati trying to uh, shred the beef in the bot lane here. Getting quite a bit of damage. They are able to hold on to the point long enough or rather, they are able to prevent them from channeling in the middle long enough. And now Jati backing out here as the rotation coming from Broken Alliance there. And it's going to be Genji swift striking over there, I think, to uh, pick up the Dragon Knight. Probe 1 with the first Dragon Knight of the game here, but it's already at about 60%. Loads of damage coming out. It doesn't have a whole lot of health here at the three and a half minute mark. Mason Blaze down here clearing up the lane so that at least when this Dragon Knight comes down here that's going to have to deal with the tower shots. But check out the positioning. We've talked about this before, making sure that when you're in that Dragon Knight or the Protector that you're only taking damage from the one tower that you're attacking if you, if you absolutely have to. I expect they'll be able to, I was going to say, get the top tower, but they missed with the, uh, the flame. Anubarak does get this stun to protect Genji after the chastise landing there checking up in the top lane here so rexar and uh dehaka having a, a jolly old time the quick drag in on tamisha there pulling her in but it's still all the damage has been done on probe one side so ultimately one tower down on this side and of course the one tower down in the mid lane for uh broken alliance so equal overall in structures but again we see the bottom camp being picked up here by Broken Alliance. They're a little bit ahead in this camp game. And we see them rotating in onto their siege camp as well. While Probe 1 calling for the pings. I believe that was them anyways. I don't think that uh, that was ETC's pinging it. But with them picking up the, uh, the siege camp, this is going to push... Probe one off of their siege camp, at least for the moment. There are four people here, so we do see Anubarak try to get in there. The face melt, though, is going to push Anubarak back. They do get that swift strike kill onto Lunara. 
But the siege camp successfully picked off by Broken Alliance. And Jaina gonna try to keep this from getting in any damage onto this bottom fort here. As uh, ETC now knocking it back, getting another tower, but check it out, Jaina just got rooted. But there's no, no potential for follow-up as the wall was still up. And with the next Dragonite coming up, I was just a moment too late to catch Dahaka here with this uh, Bruiser Camp, though. Check out the damage here. Much, much better for them in the top lane as, uh, as now they've gotten the full wall down. It looks like they're going to get the first full fort as well. And that's a huge boost now for the Rexar in that solo lane. Daka no longer has a, a place to tap without making quite a trip across the... Uh, Cross the map, but there's the cocoon onto the junk rat. Power slide in onto the Anubrak, and tens here for both teams. So, just a couple of things used there. Actually, just one. Just, just the cocoon. But so far, neither team able to push in onto the opposite uh, point. A little bit of an engage there onto the Jaina, but cleanse coming out from Rhaegar to keep her safe. We see a rotation going up from Anubrak, I'm sorry, from uh, Anduin and Junkrat. Anubrak up here as well as Rexar trying to pick up this top point. Or I'm sorry, trying to hold on to the top point, rather. Because they already had that one. And it's going to be chastised in onto the Rhaegar, but Genji's the one who is in a, a small amount of danger. Not not too much, because he's, he's hypermobile. And here they come. They've got a, a minimal wave and Jaina trying to obliterate that quickly so that the damage going out onto the team. But there's the Ancestral. Did not quite land and uh, Riptire as well used. So Jaina's going to be the first one to go down. Moshpit going out only onto the, the Rhaegar it looks like. There's the Ancestral landing and ETC did get put into the cocoon a little bit uh, later than perhaps they probably would have liked. But Christy trying to get out does get the Burrow Charge out. And that now gives a 5v4 advantage here to Broken Alliance. We see Junkrat trying to head up as the ping's calling for coming into the bot lane. Yeah, sorry. There you go. Talents are posted. I try not to keep them up for the whole game just because it blocks out so much of the screen. But uh, yeah, I'll try to try to keep make sure that they're up often enough for you to keep track of them there. All right, so Rexar's got a hold of top lane pretty effectively here. And the vision scoping out that a new Brack is on his way. Thunderblade clearing up the Wisp as both of the siege camps here making their way into the bot lane. But Rexar now in a bit of trouble here as the rotation did come out. And that's a whole lot of blue coming in onto the Rexar. Rhaegar able to get onto the point to flip it. So they're not going to be able to pick up the Dragonite just yet. In fact, does he... Oh my god, he got it! How did he... Holy smokes! Anubarak just chilling at the Dragonite, able to pick that up <laughs> just at the, the last possible second, because they were all up there in the top lane. All right, wall down in the bot lane here. And we do have a siege camp here as well, so the Junkrat throwing that concussion mine to spread the... Uh, giants out and a Nubarak all by himself here in the bot lane just trying to get what damage he can but the dragon knight already at 10 percent health so it's not going to get very far here but we do see probe one here coming up with three into the mid lane trying to see if they can't get some damage onto this mid fort doesn't look like it's going to get very far as uh, rex are also trying to keep the top fort alive let's show those 13s here All right, and once again, Broken Alliance coming down into the bot lane, picking up this uh, bruiser camp here in the bot. So far, it hasn't gotten too far with the numerous camps they've had in the bot lane here. Uh, but we do see this rotation here coming from Probe 1. This is a 4v4 with the bruiser camp. So kind of expect to see some fighting going on here. And there's that chastise followed up by the impale. 
And uh, the healing totem going down as well. Cocoon going out onto Anduin here. So the Riptire coming in, chasing down right now just the Beetle. Looking for a good target. Finds it in the Jaina. But so far, only now the two ultimates left for Probe 1. Uh, most of them available here for Broken Alliance. They do secure the kill on Amisha. And ultimately, this is going to be a bottom fort going down. It looks like Anubarak almost looking to chase still. Does get the Impale onto John Knight there. We see some pings calling out for movement. We we also have that uh, Bruiser Camp going in the top lane here. So while this fight is taking place, value is is happening. Amisha's back on the board. They do get the power or the stun, the charge stun over to the ETC. There goes the Ancestral onto Anubarak, keeping Anubarak well and healthy and in the fight. And it looks like we're going to equalize that pressure in the bot lane as uh, Dahaka went up top to keep. Everything safe in the top. Or at least everything as far as keep is concerned. ARAM div, let's go. There must always be no doubt, no doubt. But will it be you? All right, both teams once again picking up their siege camps here. Timer on the bot lane, 2 minutes, 17 seconds. So that's going to be... Uh, uh, well, actually, I was going to say it'll be after the dragon, but who, but who knows? Power slide in onto Rhaegar. Rhaegar's in trouble. Can't cleanse himself, trying to stay alive with that healing totem, but here comes the Riptire looking for the wolf. They see the pings onto Jaina, and Jaina going down. Silence coming in onto Anubrak, and that's going to be a dead beetle as well. Two for nothing for Broken Alliance. And currently the structure advantage, and both Dragon Knights going over to Probe 1, but the kills 5-2 to two so far in favor of Broken Alliance. So two to one here as Rexar trying to hold on to this point as long as possible to keep uh, Broken Alliance from being able to pick that up. But Thunderblade was able to zip down here and, and grab that in the bot lane as well. And it looks like Rexar is going to do exactly the same. I don't know if they can get it before Rexar or before Dahaka. I guess they can. Never mind. At least flipped it over the halfway mark. So... So Rexar doing a really good job there of stalling out the point control here. We do have level 16s for both teams. And now Dahaka coming in onto the Rexar does land the tongue. Rexar throwing out uh, the boars. And so now that's going to give uh, the channel potential over to Broken Alliance here. At least for the next 30 seconds until Rexar is back on the map. Anduin starting the channel. Impale going out from a Anubarak there, trying to keep things slowed down. The uh, Tongue going out. Burrow charge used. And that's going to be the first Dragon Knight of the game going over to Broken Alliance. Dragon Knight number three. Level 17 to 17 here. Rexar not quite back into the game, but he's about to be. And this is where Broken Alliance now can start to equalize the structures and potentially even take an advantage. We see a little bit different strategy here. Broken Alliance uh, taking more time with the Dragon Knight rather than you know taking it straight into the fort and, and eating the damage. They waited for the minion wave here. And so this Dragon Knight getting a lot more value here. Also, it's a little bit later in the game, so a little bit higher damage, but we see the Dragon Knight sitting at 60% thanks to the minion wave helping to absorb those shots here. And ETC trying to catch on to Christy there, but the Beetle just a little bit too fast for that. 20 seconds left on the Dragon Knight here as they are working on this bottom fort wall. They do have the sidewall down as well as one tower now. It looks like they missed with that uh, cone of fire here. But all the while, Dahaka soaking top going to give Broken Alliance level 20 first. Unless they're able to catch somebody here. And that might be a little bit of a difficult proposition, even with the Burrow Charge potential from Anubrak, which now there goes the Cocoon here. Uh, the ETC face melt not going to back the team of Probe 1. Uh, Silence coming out onto... Couldn't quite tell who it was there. I think Thunderblade. Ancestral going out onto the, the Genji. Uh, Dragonblade was used, but it's going to be Salvation getting interrupted there. 
and Lunara does go down here. So this is the exact kind of engage they're looking for here. ETC power sliding, and it's going to be the counter kill onto Jaina. Misha trying to get value, but is going to go down. So that reduces the stun potential, especially for Misha, uh, for, for Probe 1, because Misha's dead. And now the ping call onto the Siege Giants here as Probe 1 in full retreat. in that one-for-one one trade here. And now, with level 20 advantage coming up here, let's take a look at these talents. Showcase these. So that Contagion could be monstrous. Can you imagine a Contagion then, the last fight? That would have been the end of the game, I think. Varian's Legacy as well. And, of course, the Nature's Toxin uh, damage bonus for Lunara. Some, some very interesting uh, setup picks here. And with that level 20 advantage here and the double siege camp, the bot keep is going to go over. And there's a missed isolation, though. That's a 60-second cooldown that's going to be down for a while here. Uh, John Knight getting damage coming in from Jaina is able to use that burrow to get out. And now just clearing up here the siege camps as the Dragonite is coming up. Probone wants to get the level 20s before this Dragon Knight comes up so they can actually, you know, have a, a decent equal fight. And ultimately, this Dragon Knight could end the game. Definitely if uh, if Broken Alliance picks it up. Possibly if Probe 1 picks it up. But so far here, both teams are electing to zip over to their Bruiser camps and get those pushing. Both sides have catapults occasionally in that lane, so at least for right now, that'll that'll be an equal fight. We see a little bit of a split here between the teams. And level 20 is now available for Probe 1 as well. But ETC coming in here looks a little dangerous as, uh, as a Nubrak... Never mind. Dahak is not here. But uh, there's the burrow charge here. Cocoon out onto the Anduin. Riptire coming out. The ice block dodges it. And Genji now with the swift strike going to town here. Trying to finish up the Dahaka. Dahaka gets the burrow and makes it out. ETC nearly getting taken out here. And we see uh, Genji trying to finish the job onto ETC. But not quite able to make it. Shredded at low health. And there's the Ancestral coming out onto the Jaina. And let's just take a look here. Was It It was not Deathmatch. It was uh, Bolt of the Storm. So ETC has to be a, a little bit more careful than sometimes uh, might otherwise be. But we do have Catapults here in the bot lane pressuring onto the core. We're going to get a rotation down from Probe 1. And Varian, or I'm sorry, uh, Anduin trying to get the channel. But Anubrax able to get the flip just in time. Minions don't actually soak shots away from DK. Oh, thought they changed that. Oh, does it? Oh, I didn't think it did that. Fair enough. Well, they did it anyways. They had a they had a wave of minions for the damage to take it down faster, I guess. I'll have to look into that. Wonder what other changes came in that patch that apparently I didn't read. So level 20s here on both sides. They're gonna pick up their siege camp. Both of them. And again, catapults in the bot lane here for Broken Alliance. Dahak is up in the top. We can expect him to bro down here soon as uh, the Impale gets dodged here by the ETC. Riptire coming out, looking for a target. And there's the Contagion going out onto three. A big mosh onto three as well. And Lunara getting that spread damage. Storm Shield coming out, though. Uh, really in danger in the back here. But so is Dahaka going down. And Lunara going to be the next to fall. Salvation coming out. And the Ancestral coming out again. This time onto the Anubrak. Kubiko going to go down as Anduin... Set, going back to the graveyard. Shredded might be the next to fall here as Anubrak catches him. And that's a four for one trade for Probe One. And it used everything in the tank. Genji heading up to the top to get the flip in the top lane. Jaina heading to the middle, presumably to pick up the Dragon Knight. And at least for the next 20 seconds, the only person on the map is Junkrat.
All right, so presumably we're going to see them head toward the bottom lane here. We do have a Siege Giant, just one, but uh, also a Catapult. And it looks like most of the damage here for Broken Alliance will be up to defend. ETC and Anduin a little bit late, so they will have their full team to defend once this keep is down. Well, presumably once this keep is down. I suppose that's wishful thinking. All right, Dragon Knight sitting at half, keep goes down, and everything is available except for Mosh Pit on the side of Broken Alliance here, so we're gonna see Probe 1 pulling back. And just trying to stall out the team. And of course, with Anubarak in the Dragonite, he's able to burrow charge out if he needs to. Yeah, that, that team fight, that last team fight, four for one with the Contagion and Moshpit, absolutely fantastic engage, uh, but it left the rest of the team exposed on the point. And with the Jaina and uh, Genji going nuts there, it didn't uh, it didn't take long, but this is this is the first time this game that we see Probe One looking at the bottom camp. We're also going to see Broken Alliance coming in on this, and it's not going to be done by the time that Broken Alliance gets here. So there's the face melt to check the bush. Remember, folks, it's okay to face melt check a bush, but don't face check a bush. And Anubrak diving in really far away from his team. I I don't like that at all and he's taking a bunch of free damage here half health all right then so pushing up with the bruiser camp here in the bot lane we're seeing seeing the pings calling for the siege giant as well so that's going to give a free clear over to broken alliance and probe one heading back to get their own siege camp here And this time, Probe 1 is going to be the one with the pressure in the bot lane. So, ultimately, structures mostly equal. The mid uh, fort down, so occasional catapult pressure in the mid lane here that Probe 1 has to be mindful of. And, of course, the top bruiser camp still going. But this officially, this will be the last Dragonite. This is it. Whoever wins this... I don't see any way that the other team uh, successfully defends a 25 plus minute Dragonite. All right, both teams playing in the bushes, looking around. Lunara, of course, having the Vision Wisp. And after a few moments, that should expose most of that team, right? There they are. So I don't know if we're actually, I don't think that we're seeing a core push. I think they were just trying to, yeah, trying to bait him out, pull him back as Dahaka now getting onto the top point there. But he burrows down before it's flipped, so they don't have the opportunity to go get the Dragonite. Riptire coming in, hitting hard, and Jaina silenced here. They're trying to get away. Rhaegar is well silenced, but ultimately... Uh, the Contagion onto, I think, three there. Did not get as much value as Dahaka would have liked. Same with the Riptire. They did bait out the Ancestral, so a lot of ultimates were used there. Uh, but Dahaka wasn't quite able to get this top point. So there's uh, so there's no chance for them to gather the Dragonite just yet. And of course, now Anubarak playing the dance, coming down and picking this up in the bot lane. All right, so there's the bush check here from Anubarak. I feel like Anubarak might need to be a little bit, a little bit more careful than I've seen uh, in some of the game, just because you know, a power side with a tongue and Anubarak can find a dead, dead squish, squish bug. Uh, but Lunara down here on the point by herself. Anubarak's trying to maybe stall, but uh, ultimately the rotation here does uh, prevent them from picking up the point, but Anubrak, being all by himself, did end up going down there. So now, 
Probe One in a bit of a pickle as they've got to figure out a way to defend against this Dragonite. And with their keep down, I don't know that there's any way that they're going to be able to defend that. Especially if they end up losing a Genji here in the exact fashion that I just mentioned. Rhaegar might be... No, too late. All right, so Dragonite is on its way. Broken Alliance making their way to the core here. 25 seconds until Anubarak is back. 45 until Genji's back. <laughs> and uh, looks looks pretty solid here for Broken Alliance. Rip Tire is coming out. It's looking for that... Uh, oh, I was going to say the Rhaegar and Jaina, but right now it's just making its way around looking for two targets if possible ancestral going out onto the Rhaegar core already at 90 percent here shredded getting pulled back by the leap of faith and that is going to be game number one going over to broken alliance gg welcome valcomer glad you could join us tonight for this heroic division game 11 kills to 7 overall. The uh, Look at the damage. Holy cow, look at this damage. 130,000 almost from Junkrat. By comparison, 55,000 on Jaina. Now, I mean, 11 kills to 7, that is that is absolutely insane how much damage uh, Junkrat put out onto heroes. And I, obviously some of that's onto the Dragon Knight, some of that's into Misha. Um, because let's actually take a look at that, by the way. Rexar, 121,000. Big, big difference in between these two tanks here. Or I guess really the three tanks um, at the top of this here. So, and you know what? That was a very strong game uh, for Probe 1. I'm, I'm really impressed with the number eight seed in this game. They did a lot of work. Uh, they were very, very much in that game until the the very end of it there so you know it wouldn't surprise me to see a, a, a another game that is very close like that <laughs> i know right wouldn't it be nice if if hgc was back guys rip all right well let's check in here and find out what these guys are doing uh let's see who is the captain oh no i think it's really see what they want to do if they want to go to map pick or if they want to do first pick But let's take a look here at uh, at the standings here so far in Heroic. There are still two. Ah, excellent. Just got word that uh, Probe One would like to go to Infernal Shrines. So let's we'll we'll do uh, we'll do the standings first here. Let's see bracket. There we go. All right, and so with that now, we've got Broken Alliance one win away from going to the semifinals. Checking in on the maps though, Broken Alliance banned out the Volskaya Foundry and Towers of Doom. Probe One banned out Battlefield of Eternity and Tomb and Spider Queen. Our first game, Dragonshire, was picked by Broken Alliance. It was won by Broken Alliance. And on the right here, uh, we've got Probe 1 selecting Infernal Shrines. So looking for that home team advantage, if you will. Both teams are ready to go here. So we're going to get into game number two on Infernal Shrines right away. They don't need time. They're ready to go. Who beats Rexar in lane? Uh, Chen, I think, does. I've seen uh, Artanis beat uh, Rexar in lane. And by beat, I, I think it's... I don't know that it's necessarily that they beat them directly. I think that it's more like they're equal, and so whichever player is better ultimately wins out. 
Yurel, I think, can as well if you're not if you're not really good about uh, microing Misha. So there you go. All right. Uh, I'm gonna leave it on draft for 20 seconds here. I just gotta fill up water. I'll be right back in one second as we go through this. All right, seeing some very familiar bands from last game. However, uh, in a little bit of a different position there for the Ana and Johanna, but because of that, that's going to leave Sylvanas up for Broken Alliance. So we might see we might see a little bit higher priority on the tank pick. I don't know if. Uh, if they want to have a, pa a tank earlier, but we're actually going to see the Jaina Leoric this time. So a little bit different. That gives them the potential for a double soaker. And of course, Sylvanas would give the potential to push harder. But Uther going to be picked up. So the interesting thing is... Is Uther going to be the tank, or is Uther going to be the healer? Hmm. I think... I think right now I feel like Uther's the tank. But we'll see. It's third band coming in from Probe 1 here. No, we haven't seen... We haven't seen Akira. I don't know if uh, if that is played as much in the heroic levels. But we are going to see the Phoenix and Diablo being banned out there, so... No laser beams coming out. No meme beams, no purification salvos. No potential for a uh, Leoric Entomb into a Planet Cracker. Sorry, sorry chat. No memes today. And doing an ETC, switching sides. I like that a lot. There's a lot of potential uh, CC with the Entomb, with the Ring of Frost, with the uh, Mosh Pit, the Light Bomb. I, I like this so far for uh, Probe 1 a whole lot. Ah, yes, and Shredded picking up the Uther being the tank. That makes a lot of sense, too. All right, so we're going to see John Knight coming in on the Sonya. And Oriel going to be the actual healer this game. So we've seen, definitely seen a lot more of the pairing of Uther and Oriel here lately. And throw in the Grey main for the damage and, and the potential of that... Uh, Divine Shield. And you've got a pretty scary prospect there. Finally, the former solo laner now going over to Raynor and leaving Thunderblade as the uh, as the new solo laner. 
So I'm not sure. I, I don't know if Sonya... I don't think she's... If she does have the ability to double soak, it's not going to be at the same rate that Leora can do. Yeah, the, you know, the, the Johanna bands are, are great. Um, it, I mean, it makes sense with what they went with the Greymane and the Sonya and, and even Sylvanas, um, you know, making it very, a lot more difficult for their uh, DPS to do damage if they're all blinded. All right, here we go, folks. Game number two between Broken Alliance and Probe One on Infernal Shrines. On the left, we've got Broken Alliance looking to close it out with a quick 2-0 victory here. John Knight going to be playing the Sonya. Shredded on the Uther. Jet playing the Sylvanas. Mason Blaze on Greymane. And Cubico on Ariel. And off to the right, we have Probe 1. Perfection going to be playing Anduin. Christy on ETC. Really on Raynor. Jati on Jaina. And Thunderblade on Leoric. Really? So you can... Okay, fair enough. I don't play enough Sonya. I, she's one of my bottom heroes, I think. Or bottom played heroes. So we're going to have the team splitting up here with the Sylvanas coming up into the top. And Sonya holding in the, the bottom portion here to uh, try to make sure that they can stall this out. Uther doing the same here. And that's going to be a quick, easy tower for Broken Alliance already. Let's pop up these talents again, take a look at what's going on here as uh, Sonya and Leoric making their way to start with the double rotation. Or double lane soak, rather. Power slide in onto the gray main there. And uh, followed up by the Uther stun, that hammer of justice, onto Christy. Mason Blaze making it out safely, does have Oriole's hat to generate the hope, the crown. And we see, as we saw early in the last game here, both teams zipping over, getting onto their camps. Right at the beginning here. A uh, slight variation on the Jaina build, it looks like. We've got the Winter's Reach giving that additional range. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here that's maybe a little bit different? So not Bold Strategy or Renew. It's Pursued by Grace there for the Anduin. And uh, Kibiko knocking back the Jaina into the wall there. And Jaina being all kinds of out of mana here. Going to go ahead and head back. But much like on Dragonshire here, Broken Alliance already picking up their own Siege Camp and the bottom Siege Camp. So picking up two camps for one that uh, Probe 1 picked up. And EDC just dodging out of the way of the detainment strike there. But so far here with the Sylvanas and uh, the Siege Camp here, they're able to get down this top tower to half already in the in the mid lane. A lot of damage coming out from uh, Broken Alliance. And they're already going to be starting on their Shaman Camp as well. So the Shaman Camp will be done here early. Now, whether or not they hold it, no. They're just going to send it off. Get that going. Now, I'm interested to see where they go from here. Sony's going to stay up there and hold on to the, uh, the Shaman Camp. Get what value they can there. This is a Frozen Punisher, so it's not one that you just want to let go early game. But with the Sylvanas, they're going to get the same value that this Punisher would get. So they're going to actually come up here, shut down the towers, make use of this Shaman Camp, and burn it down as quickly as possible. While Probe 1 focuses on the point and sends Jaina... Look like maybe they were sending Jaina up to the top. But uh, instead, sending Jaina to just gather Soak. Help them get to level 7 uh, first here. And just like that, a full Shaman Camp still, 
Rogan Alliance coming up and getting the top fort already. They're starting to work on this keep wall as well. One tower down. Already working on the second tower. And the only person here coming to respond to it so far is the Leoric. And now we've got Anduin and Jaina as well. But this is the, this is a really bad place here. Is uh, Jaina already getting chunked down there by the Greymane, and now Leoric has to back out too. No kills just yet, but two of these heroes, very very low, and the Punisher at ten percent does ultimately get this bottom fort. Is Sonia not quite able to finish it before so? Uh, but so much more value from Broken Alliance getting that full fort wall keep or fort and keep wall and ultimately half of the keep as well so looking for this kill the etc body blocking as much as possible onto the uther and they do get the kill there's the first blood but even still right now at least value going over to broken alliance and check this out top lane this is going to be an arcane uh shrine here that next punisher is definitely going to kill a keep if it goes into uh the hands of broken alliance siege camps being picked up by both teams here a little bit faster on probe one we see the assist pings coming out looks like etc not quite able to get there but once again, Christy, a little bit ahead of the team here, does use that face melt trying to get away quickly. And the leap of faith from perfection, keeping the cow alive. But again, like the whole, most, not most, a lot of last game and, and a fair amount of this game so far, Christy's been, you know, pretty far ahead of the team now. Is that you know communication is it what i don't know but they are going to potentially get this kill onto the uther and they do there so successful kill there the light bomb not ultimately being uh of value but cer certainly there to help secure the kill in case uther was able to somehow get a, a heal or something there And we see the danger pings up in the top here. But keep in mind, uh, Sylvanas and Greymane now in the bot lane. They're countering this pressure just as much. So we'll see which team is able to pull it down first as Raynor's Hyperion is gone now. So pretty even overall. Just a few moments later, but now the Shaman Camp is available here in the top lane for Probe 1. So they're going to go ahead and pick this up. Now the interesting thing will be if both teams elect to keep going. And at least for right now, with having Sylvanas, that's what Broken Alliance wants to do. It seems that that's also what Probe, wants, Probe 1 wants to do. They want to get uh, this wall down, maybe get some value onto this keep so that they can equalize this. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if they pull back, if both of these teams just continue to race. It's still very close. Uh, Greymane versus Raynor, essentially. And it looks like... It looks like Broken Alliance is going for core. It looks like so is Probe 1. So we've got a race on our hands here. Sonya trying to to stall things out and it is close the shaman camp is here as well mosh pit onto the sonia just to keep her stalled 45 oh my god i don't know who wins oh it's looking like it's gonna be broken alliance so close wow that is absolutely crazy what a, way, what a way to finish that out in in uh, under eight minutes, I think that was. I'll have to look at, the, see if I can catch that on the, uh, the dashboard there. But yeah, I think that was under eight minutes. It's absolutely just crazy. 7.56, yep. Well, congratulations to Broken Alliance on their 2-0 victory. Let's go ahead and see if we can get uh, Jet in for an interview. 
Let's see, lock five. All right. If you've got questions for Jet or for the team, post them in chat. Let me know. Certainly uh, feel free to tag my name so that we can make sure that I catch them. Zero kills to two. And I want to point out here, this was another zero kills team winning the game. It's not always Juice Pirates that does that. Just some of the time. All right, let's see. What does Jet say? Sure, he says. All right, so we'll be getting an interview with Jet in just a moment. All right, welcome, Jet. Hello. Congratulations! That was a uh, that was a different ending than I expected to see in that. That was an adrenaline rush. That's what that was. My goodness. I bet. So so I gotta ask you after after seeing this, how confident were you making that call to go sure. into the keep or to the core? Still, still gray main. I don't know like what can out push Silv gray main. That's just like an insanely good push comp, and we knew that John was gonna. Uh, kind of defend us pretty well, like stop them from pushing pretty well. Uh, him landing the spear on Rainer was actually pretty big too, and forcing ATC to mosh instead of hit four. Right. That was really nice. Yeah, there's uh, the classic double support team going for the base race at seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> from uh, from Josh Sill in chat there. So that was, you know, that was a very entertaining series, right? Game one was uh, very much back and forth, it was quite the dance. Uh, game two, two kills, both of which were against you, and you guys won with the, the zero kills, so that should uh, up your KDA pretty well. Um, so, you know, like, give me your thoughts overall about this series. Let's start with that. Um, I felt like game one was really sloppy for us. I mean, we we kind of came in without practicing much, so we, we our comms were pretty sloppy, like, we were... No, I'm, I wouldn't say like argumentative, but we were kind of, you know, questioning stuff too much when we should have just, you know, gone with it. We hesitated too much in game one, and it really showed. I um, uh, felt like our drafts both game were fine, though. Uh, game two was, I, that's just such a, like a non-orthodox game. Like, I don't know what we did well other than we just right-click buildings. Like, that was basically it. We just right-click buildings when we should. Um, and yeah, I felt like our, our draft game too was also a little bit better. But yeah, I, th sure. I, th I, thought, I thought it was a good series. I thought it was a good series to watch. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, it was definitely enjoyable. And, um, you know, there was uh, a couple of weeks ago, there were a lot of, you know, back and forth conversations about a variety of different strategies. And, you know, one point that I, I made somewhere in the three days worth of text was, you know, the whole point of the game is to kill the core. And as early as you can possibly do that, you, you make the call, you go do it, and you win the game. And that's what you guys did here in this second game. And you could tell that that was your, kind of, ultimately your your plan in a way, because you skip out on the first Immortal, you go kill the Ford in the top lane, you get halfway to the keep, or halfway through the keep in the, in the first one as well. Um, and you didn't have the Immortal. So it was... It was interesting to kind of see that play out um, in a sub eight minute game. Um, yeah. I mean, we just had, we knew that we, our comp was really good at pushing and we knew like the first immortal on Infernal usually isn't that strong. And we like, like I said before, like Greymane main Silv, like we just out push almost anything. Even if they get the, uh, what is it, the Punisher we can still out push like we can get the fort down before they even get the objective and that's exactly what happened so we were just like okay they're still gonna push let's just keep pushing then like we know we got this like let's just keep going until they have to defend us basically and it worked sure so in uh in game number one you guys banned out the the johanna Gar garage ultimately they picked into the a new brack after you'd picked uh etc um and you know like you said, there were definitely moments in that game where 
uh, it, it seemed like the communication wasn't quite there. There's one specific point that I, I remember in that, that bot point where you guys got a monster three-man contagion followed by a three-man mosh and lost the fight entirely. Um, you know, because of the, just because of the coordination. Um, but because of your play throughout the game and, and your macro in the, in the bot lane especially, you know, even when they picked up the Dragon Knight, they couldn't end the game. Um, and so when when you guys are making this call, these calls, and you're you're having some of that uh, that argumentative moments, because certainly other teams and all the other divisions have that. Um, is there a point where you guys in that game like turned around and said, "Hey, you know what? We got to stop doing this." Like, what what did you do to make sure that that kind of turned around and got you the win? Um. Well, we really. Like we we kind of, we've we've run that uh, comp on that map quite a few times, and uh, we knew that we had to pick our fights. Like we had to pick our moments with that comp that we run, and especially with like a Nubrak, their hard CC means that we cannot fight on their terms. So it, like especially like when you said that that ETC with Contagion, like that was a really good play by our front line. But yeah, like our back line was not on the same page also uh mason's rip tire got interrupted in that mm, fight. Mm, so okay huge. but um yeah like we we just we knew that we had to pick our fights and late game when we got the um i think it was the Jaina pick and the anubarak pick uh like we knew like okay once we get one pick late game we can kind of snowball this again and luckily, like it worked out for us. They they just rotated a little aggressively, and we were able to capitalize on on the mistake, and it worked out for us. Absolutely. So your next opponents are either going to be uh, Nobo Esprouts or Archon. Um, have you looked ahead to that at all? Do you have any thoughts on on you know one team or the other that you have preference to play? Uh, anything you want to say about that at all? Um, we, I mean, so we, we've, we're basically taking it one game at a time, you know, because we don't want to, we don't want it like, okay, yeah, we're first seed. We can just, you know, steamroll till the champion. Like, no, we don't want to do that. We took this game like seriously. We didn't really look past it, but we, you know, we played these teams before. Um, I feel like when we went against Archon, we were still kind of a young team and I feel like we can do better than what we did last time. So I think that. Like we're confident basically going into the semifinals of of NGS, but we like, like I said, we're just gonna take it one game at a time. We're not looking at the championship right now. We're looking at the semifinals first. Sure, sure. So I was just uh trying to pull up here. So Archon, you guys were two and one, and uh Nobo you were two and oh, so but you're right, that Archon game was uh was early. It was I think your third one fourth uh fourth game in the season out of thirteen, so um yeah so certainly plenty to look forward to and of course it's not even on the schedule yet so who knows who you're going to be playing or or when they're going to actually get that on the schedule to find out um but uh you know what one last question for you here my my final go-to question that i ask of uh everybody what was your favorite moment out of the uh out of the series here tonight um favorite moment to be honest it was probably pushing that top keep on inferno like that was just i don't know like we just it was kind of like, oh, they're gi the gi they're giving us this. Let's just take as much as we can, and we played it really clean. We didn't overstay, and get like get one picked or something. We played it basically to the exact point of we could have done that much damage while staying alive and still get out. I, I feel like that was a really clean play for us, and I really liked it. I agree, and and you know. You guys almost got the uh, kill onto the Jaina. You almost got the kill onto the Leoric. And, uh, I mean, if you get either of those kills, that keep goes down there, right? Um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you guys did uh, did fantastic. Well, great. Listen, uh, let's wrap this up. Uh, any shout-outs you'd like to make? Yeah, I mean, uh, my entire team, you know, John, Cubico, Mason, Shredded, we, we pulled it out. We played pretty well today. Better the second game than the first game, but we played, I still like playing with this team of course but um i like to shout out you know broken alliance our sponsors they're just awesome they're they, they put out like a huge stream today it was awesome to watch and everything they're they're a really cool organization um i like to shout out satat our coach that guy pep talks like no too much like insane pep talks we were so pumped going to these games and of course you 
set, like setting records uh, for casting NGS matches. <laughs> insane caster level here and uh the other team you know we they 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 had like we, we were able to schedule it pretty well with this team that's something to commend this ngs season that, that you know scheduling is 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 happening you know so yeah that, that's it this you know thanks for thanks for everything well fantastic and you know thanks to you as well for uh and your team for making sure that you got all your flex matches scheduled and played uh in advance of the end of the season so that's a that's a big value win um you mentioned your uh your sponsor had put together a big stream uh where could people find that if they wanted to go check that out um they streamed um it was a big fighting games like you know smash bros tekken super you know all those kind of games um they did it at bxa gaming uh like slash twitch tv um and it was yeah like for for a small local thing that they sponsored it was really well produced and i really liked watching it gotcha right on so uh probably twitch.tv slash bxa gaming then yes because yeah, it yeah. comes after okay great awesome well you know what i mean always happy to to shout out a sponsor when uh when our teams have them because obviously that's really helpful for the the players and ultimately for the community, especially in the uh, the amateur scene. So thanks, Jet and uh, Broken Alliance, for joining me here tonight. And tell your players, uh, you know, good game and uh, good luck on your next next set. Thank you. Will do. All right. Bye. All right, everybody. That is going to wrap us up here for tonight. Heroic Division quarterfinals between Broken Alliance and Probe One. What a finish to that game. A sub eight minute game on infernal shrines uh with a core rush that was so close about 10 12 percent off i almost want to go like i want to go back and watch that race again but uh that's it so let's take a look here on the standings again for the bracket here and i gotta actually move them because i didn't apparently mark that here update there we go so uh broken alliance Moving their way up into the semifinals, they'll face off against Archon or Nobo Esprouts. Uh, we also have the Keanu Reeves and Mismo skill shots uh, still outstanding. Actually, I think Archon and Nobo is tomorrow, now that I think about it. Um, so, yeah, so tune in for that. In fact, I think I might even be casting that, now that I think about it. I am casting it. 9 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow, Heroic, Archon versus Nobo will be the team playing against Broken Alliance. And then hopefully Keanu and Mismo skill shots will figure out who's when they're playing so that we know who plays against Amazing. But that's it. That's it for us tonight. Again, thank you so much for joining us here at the Nexus Gaming Series for the playoffs here. Make sure you check out the games tomorrow. There are four of them currently on the schedule. And don't forget the NGS Rewind coming at you at 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Uh, right now I've got three games. I'll, I'll post those uh, in the morning. And I think I'm going to find one more for uh, for an even four for tomorrow's replay cast. So some of those games are, uh, are uh, playoff games, and some of them are prior. So make sure you tune into that 2 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash Nexus Gaming Series. Until then, thanks for joining us, and have a great night.